Hello everyone. Welcome to Working Together on Think Tech Hawaii, where we discuss the impact of change on workers, employers, and the economy. I'm your host, Cheryl Crozier Garcia. Please join in the conversation with your comments or questions. You can call in at area code 415-871-2474, or you can tweet us at, at @thinktechhi. Today we're going to discuss one of the most common challenges managers face, engaging all members of the workforce. Today's workforce is one of the most age-diverse groups in human history. Coupled with massive changes to technology, societal norms, and age-specific expectations that workers have about their work environment, those age differences mean that managers have got to change the way they mentor, engage, and reward employees. Today's guest has a wealth of experience and success with managing an age-diverse work team. Please help me welcome Larry Moreno. Hi, Larry. Hi. Um, you spent a long time uh, in the military, uh, and so through that experience, I'm guessing, you had the opportunity to meet uh, workers, colleagues um, from all age groups. Tell me about why the um, people in the military seem to be able to work together far more uh, cooperatively maybe than folks in the civilian community do. Well, I believe that um, it, it's probably the, the structure mm -hmm. of the military. Um, we were brought up, as you can per se, we're brought up to do what we're told, mm -hmm. you know, or else, basically. So, you know, there's, um, there's a lot of ways to get in trouble, and soldiers don't want to because mm -hmm. they know exactly what will happen. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I think that is a big difference. Uh, compared to the civilian workforce, mm -hmm. because you have what I like to call middleman, which is HR. <laughs> and um, they tend to take a lot of the brunt mm -hmm. of whether the managers come to them or the employees come to them. In the military, you have leaders. You have plenty of leaders all the way up the chain. Mm -hmm. So they have, the soldiers have a lot of people to tell them stop what you're doing mm -hmm. and so they keep them out of the trouble so I think the the organization structure is probably the difference mm -hmm. and those safeguards that is to say uh, managers as we go up the chain of command who really are in a position to correct immediately mm -hmm. behaviors that they see uh, is lacking in um, our our current civilian business environment I think mentally it's not lacking. I think that maybe some of the ma uh, managers fear what could happen if they take certain actions against employees. Mm -hmm. um, HR is there to protect them. And I think if managers learn how to use them properly ahead of time, um, they could set good presidents. Mm -hmm. They could set good examples. And um, employees will know from the beginning. And I think that's important in itself. If the employees know from the beginning what they're expected to do in their job, mm -hmm. um, house rules of the office, mm -hmm. um, and as long as they follow the policies of, of the company, then they should be okay. Yeah. I have to say that I appreciate that shameless plug for HR professionals because, <laughs> well, because we as HR folks are often perceived as the enemy. We stand in the way of managers uh, correcting substandard behavior for their employees and we st we're perceived to stand in the way of employees mm -hmm. getting the justice they think they deserve or need um, whenever there's conflict between employee and supervisor. Uh, so I'm glad to hear that you advocate using HR as an asset um, Absolutely. Yeah, I, th I think so too. Yeah, the, um, when I first arrived there, my predecessor seemed to not like them too much. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if it was a hassle or maybe they weren't getting what they needed. Mm -hmm. um, when I took over, it wasn't a hassle. Mm -hmm. 
Right. You just got to make the phone call. Right. And every time I called, they were happy to hear from us. Mm -hmm. You know, so I, I began my part just by uh, asking them questions. Mm -hmm. Can I do this? Can I do this legally? Mm -hmm. You know, and take some of that fear away from the managers. Right. So when you counsel your employees at the beginning with the expectations, you can let them know, here's our house rules, and I can do it because HR, you know, of course be humble and nice and stuff, but don't, don't beat them down and make them scared, but <laughs> let them know that they're, you know, these are the rules. Mm -hmm. And if everyone mm -hmm. follows them and you're fair with all the employees, right. then the office will run well. Now, you had an experience where you were hired into a civilian position, and that's what I wanted to talk mm -hmm. to you about because I found your story just so compelling. But you had been hired after you retired from Correct. the military uh, to head up the auditing department. Auditing? In fraud. 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 In one of Hawaii's major corporations. And when you walked into that position, you experienced a bunch of challenges. Uh, can you tell us um, mm -hmm. the kinds of challenges that you experienced without giving any names, sure. of course, um, and how you overcame them? Because that is just, it, for me, it's a wonderful success story. Um, the, probably the largest challenge was, was the turnover. Mm -hmm. um, I already knew when I got there that the turnover was very high. And it, they were probably 200% for at least a year at one point. Mm -hmm. um, I was there probably about a month, and I could kind of see why. Um, the management style wasn't very nice. It was kind of, it was pretty rough, pretty tough. Um, I could see the tension in employees, you know. So I, I spent my first 30 days watching this mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> and then trying to learn the job at the same time. Uh, one of the things I noticed, there, there wasn't any counselings that were, that were done. Mm -hmm. uh, so, or at least they weren't on paper. Mm -hmm. So, um, I watched, when I, while I was there the first two years, we had about four people leave. Mm -hmm. uh, one of them actually left right after a counselling. Oh. And it wasn't a very good, it was, it was a decent counselling, she just couldn't accept it anymore and left at lunch. Um, so that left us in a bind. Mm -hmm. um, of course, we had some normal turnover, which was military spouses. Sure. So we knew we were going to lose them. So we were kind of prepared for those. But what I found after my predecessor m retired was the efficiencies in the office were just not there. Mm -hmm. They were still Stone Age. They were using typewriters to do massive amounts of work. Which, what year was this? Which we could use technology for it. <laughs> right. So um, they were, their hardware was kind of old. So I took, um, for example, I bought, I, I made sure everyone had double monitors mm -hmm. so they could open more programs at one time because we, we had to go into multiple systems at one time. And um, I trained everyone, including the senior staff, who had been there 30, 40 years, did no technology all that well. I taught them how to do mail merge, which took one of the processes down from two to three days to 30 minutes to an hour. Right. And it just, they loved it. Mm -hmm. Even the one senior guy who didn't want to, he didn't even want a second monitor. But I convinced him, I said, you will love it. Just give, give it a chance. And, you know, he loves it. Yeah. So. Now, you mentioned two things that I found uh, just in relating the story here that I find interesting. The first thing you said was that management was um, hard and it created a tense environment. So for someone with a military history mm -hmm. to view a particular manager's style as being tense or strict mm -hmm. or hard, mm -hmm. that must have been just 
not the most pleasant environment to work in, that's first yeah. of all. And secondly, you mentioned that there were people who could not respond well to counseling. Had there been a history of, of uh, counseling being considered punitive rather than um, uh, developmental? Maybe in their minds mm -hmm. it was perceived that way, mm -hmm. in the employees' minds. Um, I don't think it was ever put out that way, but, <clears throat> you know, don't get me wrong, I love the military. It did really good things for, for my life, my family. Um, I think what helped me was I was never one of the kind to say hua all the time, you know. Now, those were the soldiers that walked by, hua, sergeant, but I just couldn't never get myself to do it unless I was made to do it, like in basic training. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, it kind of kept me grounded for when I came out mm -hmm. to the civilian side. Um, what made that part difficult on the transition was I couldn't tell you or else anymore. Uh, okay. I couldn't say you have to do this or else. Mm -hmm. You know, I couldn't uh, raise my voice. Mm -hmm. Those are the kind of things that you couldn't do on the civilian workforce side. That's true. So, without HR getting on your, your back, enemy. <laughs> no, 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 not the enemy. But, I, but we would offer some yeah, developmental correct. mentoring to make sure you know that yelling yeah, is they, not acceptable. They worked well with me, and it was great. As far as the counselings, um, when I started them. Mm -hmm. You know, as, as I'm speaking to you now is exactly the way I speak to the employees. Mm. Explain to them, talk to them, and look them straight in the eye to make sure they understand and to make sure they understand that there's no fear coming from me. Uh-huh. That I'm, what I'm telling you is the best, best thing to do for this office. And uh, it worked, worked fine. For the two years that I took over, we didn't have any turnover. Thank you. You know, and... The one that did leave mm -hmm. was replaced immediately because he was leaving for upper movement. That's awesome. And that's the kind of departure and turnover we want, right? Mm -hmm. We want yes. people to move into positions that are better trained. Uh, stick around for a minute, can sure. you? Because we're going to go to break and do some uh, housekeeping, share with you some of the great programming on Think Tech Hawaii, and we will be back in just a minute. This is Working Together. Aloha. My name is Richard Emery, and I host Condo Insider. We talk about issues facing the Condo Association throughout Hawaii and talk about solutions. When you think about it, about one-third of our population lives in some form of common interest real estate. We broadcast every Thursday at 3 p.m. Please tune in. Tune in and thank you. Aloha. I've got the Beagle Sisters here with a healthy tip. We encourage you to enjoy the food you eat this holiday season and keep it local and healthy. Yeah. Eat the rainbow, eat yeah. the rainbow, and if you need any produce, come to the Red Barn on the North Shore. Hey everybody, it's me, Ian Davidson, host of a new show here at Think Tech called On The Go. What are you going to get during that show? I can't tell you. I can only tell you that it's going to be fun, and it's going to be sometimes, and I'm going to have a good time, and I hope that you do too. Uh, there's a bunch of stuff here at Think Tech. This is just another one. Take a chance on it. See how you like it. Thanks for watching. Welcome back. This is Working Together on Think Tech Hawaii. That's Larry Moreno. I'm Cheryl Crozier Garcia, and we are talking about how to engage a multi generational workforce. Um, Larry, before the break, you mentioned that you had um, had some pretty good experience with being able to mentor the younger folks mm -hmm. into being able to assume greater positions of authority in the organization. And I think we can both agree that keeping the best talent in the organization is in the long run best for the organization and what we want to do is find positions where that talent can be used in the best possible way um, but you also mentioned that some of the uh, shall I say your kupuna employees the ones mm -hmm. who had were very very senior had been there a long time were extremely resistant to change they didn't they didn't want to get computers and then when they got computers they didn't want to have two uh, screens so that they could look at a bunch of things how did you convince 
those very senior people who were very set in their ways that what you were suggesting was something that would make their life easier? Well, I'd like to look at it as um, getting my hands dirty. Okay. Um, for me, technology, software, hardware, it's, it's easy. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I'm kind of fortunate that I could still go back to the old school because I, I grew up with that, so mm -hmm. I know both sides. Mm -hmm. um, what I had to do, and which was not a problem for me, is I would grab my chair, I'd roll it over to their desk, mm -hmm. and I would sit with them, mm -hmm. and whatever duty they had for that day, the other person would do it, if it wasn't a major duty. Mm -hmm. And I would show them how to do it, and let them do it hands-on. Don't don't move the mouse for them, you know, and let them do it on their own. Uh -huh. <clears throat> and once they would see how quick it was, how fast it was, you know, they, they were just amazed. And they was like, oh, especially with the, with the tickets. With, if you imagine a ticket about this size, mm -hmm. typing on it, a bunch of data, uh -huh. 90 to 120 times. And all roughly the same information. Yeah, same. You just have to, you know, line by line. Right. And it was taking two to three days. Yikes. And the information already came out of a database in an Excel spreadsheet. Okay. So all you had to do was merge it. Uh-huh. You know, so I, I, built, I built the ticket for them in Microsoft Word, showed them how to merge it, mm -hmm. and then just printed it out on the computer, on the printer. Mm -hmm. And they were just amazed at that. How is it that something as basic as that, I mean, I recall using uh, mail merge uh, in the last millennium, mm -hmm. literally, uh, 20 and 30, I shouldn't even say it because I'm only 19 really, <laughs> but, um, but a long, long time ago to do these administrative functions very, very quickly. So how is it that one of Hawaii's major employers biggest corporations owning huge chunks of the market in their specific industry, how did they not automate decades sooner than they did? You know, that, that's a question I asked too when I first got there. Why would you put yourself through this when you have all this technology? And it was already there. Mm -hmm. So what it comes down to is the, the manager. Either the manager did not want to therefore couldn't train the employees mm -hmm. and or just wouldn't or send them to training and there was pl there's plenty of training yes you just have to be you know you have to give up some of your time sometimes i would do production work while they went to training mm -hmm. or if it, it's the same as if they were on vacation or not there mm -hmm. while they're sick right you still got to do production so if you treat it that way you can you can train them. Yeah, but I th I think maybe one of the strengths that you had in your favor during that time was that you were willing uh, to be seen as a person mm -hmm. who, although you had a, a leadership position, you were willing to get in there and do what everybody else was doing in order to free them up for uh, activities that would broaden their horizons. Um, and I think that's a, a kind of a shortcoming in leadership these days. We often don't see folks anymore who are willing to lead or manage by example. Um, and that's, uh, that's in a lot of ways a tragedy. And I think particularly with our younger workers, um, I've had younger folks say to me uh, when I was in the corporate world, they would say things like, wait a minute, why do I have to come in on time when supervisor it comes tr strolling in whenever she feels like it, uh, leaves early, takes long lunches, etc. And my response to them was, here's what you didn't see. What you didn't see was that from 6 o'clock to 8 o'clock, she was taking a long-distance phone call at home so that she could talk to mainland suppliers and clients. Mm -hmm. And then that's why she came in late. Uh, she went to lunch, but it was a sales meeting with six or seven other potential clients whose business we could really benefit from. And then she left early because she has a conference tomorrow, say, with folks from J. 
Japan, Thailand, and Singapore, and the call starts at 3 a.m. She's got to get in on the call. Mm -hmm. So they only see the very surface aspects of the leader's job, and they think that leadership means come in when I feel like it, go for lunch yeah. however long I feel mm -hmm. like it, leave when I want to, and let everybody else put in the time, when in reality they're not seeing the work that is so challenging that occurs literally in an outward facing position. I think a good question to ask them when they wonder mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. is if they can come in and help you on a Saturday or Sunday. They won't. You Most sure? Most of the time, they won't. And I mean, if you ask them that, the, especially the younger groups, they're, they're going to say no. Mm -hmm. And we say, okay, we work the weekends with no extra pay. Right. You know, so that's why we can do those things that you think we do and you don't know what we're actually doing, mm -hmm. but we're also 24 hours on call. Right. That's you true. Know. Although there does seem to be, I think, with our um, uh, millennial generation, Generation Y, more of a thing of everybody should be the same and I deserve the same breaks, the same benefits, the same rewards as everyone else does, even if I don't have seniority, even if I mm -hmm. haven't proven myself capable of handling the responsibility, et cetera. You know, I, I deserve a medal just for showing up because as kids, they got medals just for showing up. And so now they expect that. And you know, that's a good point. The, uh, one of the challenges there, when I got there, with when I brought in the new younger group, mm -hmm. um, was the Kapuna already had set schedules mm -hmm. that our predecessor gave them. Mm -hmm. um, they were given time to do personal things before the normal uh, getting off of work time. Right. Uh, a couple of the younger ones brought that up, and. Um, before I did anything, any counselors or any, with anyone, I called HR. Okay. What did HR tell you? And I said, if the older gener, if something's already set for them, and the other folks are complaining, um, what do I do? Can I tell them no, and or do I have to tell the kapuna they can't do it anymore? Mm -hmm. So they said, it's your discretion. You just. You may want to consider certain things, which we did eventually. Mm -hmm. But when I took him into the counseling, I said, one of them has a father who's very old and she takes care of him once a week. Mm -hmm. The other one is, um, has medical conditions and requires therapy or chiropractic work. And it's only a certain time. Mm -hmm. So they're allowed to do that. So we let them go early, they make up their time. I said, if you can give me something, show me some proof that you really need to leave early, then I will do that. Mm -hmm. Other than that, I'm not going to. Right. So eventually we allowed them every other Friday to leave 30 minutes early. And they were happy with that? And they were happy with that. Such a little concession. Mm -hmm. Wow. I would not have thought that half an hour every other Friday would be a big deal. Well, here it is, especially with traffic. Well, yeah, that's true. <laughs> but then again, 4.30 is not any different than 5. That's true, too. <laughs> but it's the perception that you are actually being flexible mm -hmm. um, that I think has, has the, the, the true value uh, for those younger workers. Um, what about now keeping that workforce engaged? You don't want your Kupuna employees to leave or retire without having the benefit of their experience and their mentoring of the younger folks. Uh, and so what they would require or view as a benefit is something that might be very different from what your younger workforce wants. So how do you keep everybody happy without uh, creating an appearance of discrimination or preferential treatment or adverse uh, selection or things like that? What I <clears throat> what I noticed there is the 30 to 40 year senior staff mm -hmm. were pretty much set. Mm -hmm. You know, they were going to come in, they're going to do their jobs, 
They're going to have fun. And, and frankly, I think I'll probably be the same way. I don't want to be at home. I want to work right. when I get that age. Uh -huh. I'm not going to want to stay at home and do nothing. Um, the younger group, to me, they are eager to work. They are eager to learn. The, only, the one thing that I kind of noticed, because I have children that age, mm -hmm. is they want to do it on their time. And they don't want to be told what to do. Mm -hmm. That's kind of how I perceive it. Mm -hmm. But if you give them the training, if you show that you're willing to teach them, they're going to stay longer. Mm -hmm. And they did. They didn't leave, but they did ask because that office is a place you don't want to spend your entire career in. Yeah. And um, so I, I trained them to leave. That's what I did. Yeah. Prepare them for their next yeah. position. That's true. Uh, we've only got uh, about a minute 30 left. So, Larry, uh, give some advice to our viewers about how they can more fully engage uh, their employees um, to get the maximum work out of them. I think if you know exactly what everyone does, mm -hmm. they'll feel comfortable <clears throat> if they're out sick or if they have to go on vacation. The other people that have to stay there and do their work will feel comfortable that you can help them. Mm -hmm. Um, talk to them a lot, get to know them, you know, humanize your employees. They're not robots. Mm -hmm. You know, they have families, they have problems, they have medical conditions. Mm -hmm. You know, all of this has to come into play on how you treat them, what their future is going to look like for you. Um, you know, put yourself in their shoes. Pursue as if it's your own person that you want to do what yeah. would you want to do yeah and um, you know just engage if you want them engaged engage with them right and, and they'll come around and that issue of engagement I think is a is probably a good place to end our conversation right now because we're almost out of time and um, our viewers need to engage with their lives so we will be uh, leaving but thank you I'd like to have you back some other time to sure. talk more about this issue and you know for those of you out there that are either uh, just embarking on a career or winding down and approaching the days you've been saving up for all these years just remember that you need to stay engaged in what you're doing as long as you can because that helps keep the workforce vibrant and productive um, I will see you in two weeks on Working Together on Think Tech Hawaii. I'm Cheryl Crozier Garcia. See you soon.